uh, <clears throat> it's so real here. And uh, today we are going to have our dialogue of session one. Um, I decided to do a 2017 dialogue session between Christians and Hebrews, and um, it's going to be set up very differently. Um, I know a lot of you guys are always used to people debating, and, and it, it takes so long to see people go through a real back and forth. Well, I did something with Sal last year, Sal Showtime, a debate talk for you, and I created my own dialogue format. And basically, it's going to go like this. I'm going to quote a scripture. I'm going to explain what the scripture means. Then I'm going to ask a question. And my my brother here, uh, Yashua Libya now, is going to go ahead and answer it. And based on his answer, we'll have a nice little back and forth until I decide, okay, Let's just go ahead and move on to something else. And then he will go ahead and read a scripture, expound on what he thinks it means, and then he'll ask me a question, and I'll give him an answer. And once again, after a nice little back and forth, this cycle will repeat. At any time, if he or me wants to stop and just have five minutes to explain anything we like, We'll go ahead and do that too. Yashua Libyan now also said he wanted to just debate whatever various topics that he is wanting to pick for 30 minutes. So that means every topic that we go over, it will be for 30 minutes. Um, just to state my intentions, of course, I'm always open to learning. Um, but uh, My position is that I'm a Christian and I have a very ancient faith uh, to sugarcoat it. Um, yeah, I just simply believe everything that is in the Bible. I believe everything the early church had taught and all the way up to the present day. Um, I try to be as consistent as possible. And so that is the position that I'm coming from. Other than that, I'll go ahead and, and, and let uh, Yasha and Libya now have just, you know, something that, that he wants to say. And then from there, he gets to throw out the, the the first topic of his concern first. Peace to the panel, peace to the family, peace to Israelites, Christians, non-Christians, and uh, peace to the inhabitants of the known planet Earth. I just want to say that I appreciate the brother so real for opening up his platform for us to have this discourse in an intellectual, respectful, humble, and brotherly manner. I appreciate the discourse, questions, concerns from all those that I've encountered who I've had the privilege of dialoguing, exchanging information, and exchanging thoughts with. Hebrew Christian alike. I'll also like to say that this discourse is not for man's glorification, but only for the most high glorification, only for the most high's glorification. I will also like to say that this discourse will be only for the edification of those who seek some type of edification, truth, justice within the scriptures as pertaining to their inquiries. I'll also like to say that though I've laid certain criterias down for this discussion, there's a few things that I would like to just take off the table or in a sense, straighten out. As far as the 30 minutes on each topic that I raise, that's not what I meant, and I understand what the brother got out of it. Uh, I knew that our people get bored quick. So I won't bring up a discussion or a topic or a specific question or a comment and expect a 30-minute discourse on that. We'll try to keep it under that. At the same time, trying to edify and 
get to some or come to some common grounds about what it is we're edifying the people on. And in this way, fashion or form, we'll have a better understanding of each other's positions, doctrines, and mindsets. And with that, and with that I say all praises unto the Most High and blessings to all humanity. Peace. All right, so you're the one that wanted to come up with all the topics, and so far you, you picked three. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and let you go first. You just go ahead and say whatever topic that you want to address, and, you know, you go ahead and maybe throw a scripture out or something, and, and from there we'll just have a look at it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, I neglected to mention in my opening that this is a time for learning. So the brother so real nor I are an objective to learning. We not a, neither one of us, I don't think, are an object are, are an objection to learning. You see what I'm saying? So nobody has the absolute and all but the most high, and he reveals it on us as he will. So with that being said, I like to pose a question, and if the brother so real can, I like him to answer this to the best of his ability. If he don't have a concrete or a solid answer, or any answer at all for that matter, then he can just say, brother, I'll get back with you once I look up on that, as I will be doing the same. So my first question I like to pose is, in reference to the, the, the Israelites who were scattered, as we read about in the book of Kings, in reference to those Northern Kingdom Israelites who were scattered, I'm gonna say it again, as we see in the book of Kings, during the time when Christ was walking the earth, preaching the gospels, during the time when the apostles was walking the earth, preaching the gospels, when Christ was walking the earth, preaching the Torah, should I say, and when the disciples and the apostles were walking the earth, preaching Christ, which is Torah, which is the Bible from front to back. What were those Israelites that were scattered, that we find being scattered in the Old Testament, what were those Israelites called in the New Testament? Go ahead. The lost uh, tribes that were, that were scattered or whatever, uh, you're talking about the, the, those who are scattered. Uh, one, they were called the diaspora. That's the word in the Greek. That does mean the scattered. Um, also, to Jesus, they were called the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's another thing they were called. I I don't know. I do believe. I know what you're 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 trying to get at, but just to kind of stay with you, I'll just go ahead and keep the pace. But that's what they were called. Um, yeah. I mean, if you want some some scripture references, I can go ahead and uh, I can give them to you right now, but. You know, before I do that, um, there was one thing that I did want to do, and I just wanted to uh, to point out something. Give me a second. Now, my response to that scripturally is, you know, when you talk about the lost sheep, you know, Jesus says in... John 10, 16, you know, other sheep I have that are not of this fold, right? Also, he says in Matthew 10, 5, and 6, you know, he talks about the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Um, I know I'm not supposed to ask a question yet, but in your mind, do, do you believe that these lost sheep of the house of Israel were called Gentiles.
Yes, sir. I do believe that was another attribute of the lost sheep, uh, those of the Northern Kingdom, and also those Jews of the Southern Kingdom who were scattered as well during the Babylonian captivity and other captivities. So I do believe Gentile was in reference to Israelites who were lusting after the flesh, who were called children of the flesh at times. Uh, that applied to them as well. Well, if that's the case, then you, you really do have some real issues um, because the last time I checked, um, Jesus had said, quote, go not in the way of the Gentiles or the Samaritans. So I'm wondering if you're saying that these lost sheep are indeed Gentiles, why on earth would Jesus say something like that? And then at the same time, he says, I've come not before the, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he never said anything about them being referred to as Gentiles. As a matter of fact, he says the opposite. So I'd, I'd like you to explain that. Okay, absolutely. In that sense, when you read that part of the scripture, uh, he's telling the disciples not to go into the way of the Gentile, but rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The reason he's telling them not to go in the way of the Gentile, in that sense, is talking about those of the who had settled themselves in the northern kingdom whom the Assyrian king settled in the northern kingdom. At that time, during Christ, the majority, and listen to what I'm saying, the majority of inhabitants in Samaria were Gentile. What I mean, not natural Israelites, according to the blood. They were Gentile people set up in the land after the original inhabitants were the, which were the Israelites were taken into captivities as you remember in the book of Kings. So we have to understand that that uh, when you see Gentiles in the New Testament, not every time is it referencing natural born Israelites who were taken off and then were living under Gentile mind states. You have to know when it's talking about Gentile, natural born and gentile israelites that just went off so i'm not one who sees the word gentile everywhere in the new testament and applies it to israelites who are scattered off absolutely not because we see the word gentile used first in genesis 10 to refer to the Japhites, the isles of the gentiles and in that sense in genesis 10 is using it to describe nations nations not tribes as in jacob ephraim joseph manasseh zebulon natali so on and so forth and so forth so that's your answer to that king okay i like five minutes please um based on what you just said you're literally telling me that when i read the new testament here that jesus and the apostles are saying in their scriptures that there are two kinds of Gentiles, that there's like a, uh, there's a Gentile that's an actual natural born Gentile, and then there's a Gentile that is actually an Israelite, but he's really uh, a, a lost Israelite, so therefore uh, he is called a Gentile. So with that being said, I, um, I, I just got some things I want to point out. Ask you a question. Here it goes. This is Luke chapter 22, verse 30. It says that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. It's talking about the future tense. 6, verse 7. Unto which the promise of our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come for which hope's sake King Agrippa I am accused of the Jews so here Paul is acknowledging 
that the 12 tribes are instantly serving God day and night. It doesn't sound like they're lost so far. Then you have James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Notice that his greeting, he called them the 12 tribes. So far, I'm looking for uh, any of the uh, the 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 uh, apostles to acknowledge these 12 tribes, some of them as Gentiles. I'm looking for that so far. I haven't found it. Um, the last thing that I do want to expound upon is this. This comes from Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. It says here, Greece. Grisha is Greece, home of the Hellens. Greeks and Grecians, however, are to be distinguished. Keep that in mind. Greeks are generally those of the Hellenic race. Grecians were the Greek-speaking Jews, folks of the dispersion from areas predominantly Greek. Greek, Grecian. So the term told you the Hellenic peoples are race. The term Helen is native for Greek. The term Hellenist means a person who takes on Greek culture or someone who speaks Greek. Okay? Helen, Hellenist. Greek, Grecian. That's how it's divvied up so far, right? So, this is why the Zondervan told you Greeks and Grecians are to be distinguished. Another thing I want to point out is that what makes this so bad is that the truth actually reveals that there are two kinds of Jews only leaving one kind of Gentile. If you turn to Acts chapter 6, verse 1, it says this, In those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily administration. So the verse above speaks of Grecians complaining to the disciples against the Hebrews because their widows were left out of the daily giving of alms because their widows were poor. So you have two types of Jews that are shown here. One kind of Gentile remains the same throughout Scripture. So one, so now onto the Jews. So since there's only one kind of Gentile being described in every passage of Scripture, your argument not only falls apart, but your argument is non-existent in the Bible or anywhere else for that matter either. Now I could go on to show you how Greek and Grecian and Helen and Hellenist actually can be described as the word American, right? Someone that's a native of America and Americanist. That means someone who comes into America and takes on our culture. And so that those little definitions are, you know, coming from earlier definitions of Greek and Grecian. And it's all consistent. So my question is, if the Gentiles are actually being described as actual Gentiles and there's two types of Jews, where in the passages of Scripture are you getting the idea that there are these lost Jews that are called Gentiles when James and Paul and everybody else is acknowledging the 12 tribes, which means that it seems like they're not acknowledging that they're lost, which brings in a question, what did Jesus really mean when he called them lost? Did he mean it in a spiritual sense? Um, but yeah, that's my question to you. The Assyrians, and they went up to Assyria and things like that, and, and uh, the, these tribes are out there. How is it that by the, the New Testament, that they're still being acknowledged as the 12 tribes of Israel and are not being acknowledged as Gentiles. I'd, I'd like some clarity on that. Okay, now, I want to get something uh, clear before we proceed. If you noticed, before I go into answering the things of this nature, did you notice that I posed one question and then let you build on it? Why did I do that instead of not pose, posing multiple questions, quoting multiple scriptures 
at one time. Why do that? Why did I do that? So the people can get some type of edification a step at a time. Okay? And John, this, it was here. And then in Revelations, that it was there. And in Exodus, this, it was this. Now, why this in Exodus? But when we go to John here, why this and there? And when we go back to Mark here, people brains is scrambling like a game of uh, 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 chess to a baby. I disagree. What I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is this. No, sir. This is why I say this, because when you approach a situation like that, I have no time or I may forget something to cover. You understand? And in the pace which you're throwing the scriptures out, I can't write them all down that fast. Okay, well, we'll go over them one by one. That was my mistake. So, yeah, absolutely. So I can't write them down that fast. So I started, if you heard earlier, when you first started going in about the third scripture you quoted, I came in like, wait a second, but I just muted my mic and let you finish. Out of respect, then I figured I'd tell you this or and, uh, and display this to uh, the listeners. So that way we can get some level of edification because I've noticed debates that go like that or discussions or dialogues that go like that and things get left out. It's just like you're playing a game of chess, two people. Somebody always see from the outside a move that neither, neither one of us see because we're constantly focused on the other person's move. So we're trying to get our self in position before the other person get in position to have the dominant position on the board. So that's why people tend to throw out a million scriptures at one time and then say, well, go ahead, answer that. And well, I'd like to definitely make myself clear. I definitely like to make myself clear and say the only so, reason that I ended up showing scripture after scripture is because I showed in every single case I understand what my you're position. I That's all no I did. Problem. I have no problem with you showing scripture after scripture, but I I only want you to show scripture after scripture step at a time. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Like okay. only thing I was able to catch. And well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll was tell you James what. One and one. I was right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Because you was going, bro. Right. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, you what. Going. I'll so go I'm ahead. Kidding, okay. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll go ahead and we'll, we'll just revisit every scripture I did one at a time. Bless so the, the first scripture that, that we'll revisit is, all right, I'm going to do this in the exact order. The first one I went to mm -hmm. was Luke 22, chapter 30. And this is what it says. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, to me, this sounds like a text where in the future, the 12 tribes are all going to be there and not one of them is being described as lost. So far, we could agree that in the kingdom, the 12 tribes are, you know, they're not going to be having the status of lost. Can we agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So here's I Acts 26, verse 7. It says this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, we have to deal with that. We have to deal okay. with one scripture at a time. That's what I was just going into. You see, once you quote one scripture, you give your uh, breakdown of it. Don't immediately go to another scripture. Give me the opportunity to say, okay, brother, well, this is how, this is how we as Israelite and as Christian understand each other doctrine without disrespecting each other, without saying, right. oh, they're dumb, we're dumb, or this is how we come to a common ground. Right, saying, right. I never said anything like that. I know. I know. I understand. I understand plainly, right. but this is what audience will say. You don't have to say it. There's people in your audience that will say this, or there's people in my audience that will be little you. You get what I'm saying? And we don't want that coming from either side. We want nothing but edification and glorifying of the most high. That's all we want. So the first scripture you uh, gave was Luke 22 and 30, right? Mm -hmm. And you said Luke 22 and 30. Let's read it. I want to get Luke 22 and 30 first. I got an NIV and a KJV. I'm not KJV only. So which one you want me to read from? It doesn't matter. Okay. I'll go to the NIV for uh for the listeners, right? For this particular 
one. And we'll go to Luke 22 and 30, like the brother said. You said Luke 22 and 30. Okay. Let's get it. And you said, why are the Israelites, or you made a statement, whether in the quest you said, the Israelites are not being called and lost in this uh, setting, but here we see they're ruling the kingdom. Okay. Well, actually, well, me, the, me, the disciples are, are judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Absolutely. They're dealing with rulership. Absolutely. So let's go to uh, Luke 22 and 30. Right? Well, you know I can answer that without going to Luke 22 and 30. Let's just go right to Revelations. Let me not even. Let's get right to the point. Let's get right to the point. Let's You're go talking right about Revelation 21, 12. Let's go to Revelation. Yeah, let's go to it. Right. I'll read it for you. Okay, bring it out. Revelation 21, verse 12. And had the wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So like Luke, this is the second scripture that we could both agree that in the future, in the kingdom, and now in the gates of heaven, according to Revelation 21, that the 12 tribes, not one tribe will have the status as lost. We could definitely agree with that, right? Okay. Ain't, but yes, sir. Isn't okay. this though a... Uh, 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 a question for me to give uh clarity on and then you i throw it back to you then you give clarity on it but you gave clarity on it just now according to what it means to you and that i'm in green i'm in agreement with that the scriptures clearly says that but uh, also i want to go to revelations 14 and 12. let me go to revelations 14 and 12. i'm gonna get it out the kjv right here we go to Revelation 14 and 12, and it states, all right, and it states, here is the patient, one more time, Revelation 14 and 12, here is the patient in the faith of the saints, those, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ. See, these are the saints. These, so when you see in Luke 22 and 30, the apostles judging, this is in direct reference to the kingdom and in direct reference to those who have became saints through perfection of the law and the faith in christ you said so the perfection they of are the law the perfection of it all now, right I'll, I'll, not, I'll remember that for later absolutely now they are not lost why are they not lost because they are saints we have to remember the law is for the unrighteous not the righteous so once you're a saint you are walking perfect in the law according to the most high so they would not be lost as i explained to you before lost sheep of the house of israel does not mean they were in regions or scattered in places unknown to the apostles at the time because you have to remember the apostles went everywhere to teach them and on the day of pentecost as we see in acts the second chapter they were coming back from all over so loss only means away from the knowledge wisdom and understanding of the most high god which are his law statutes and commandments that's all loss means then why would you say that you uh then why would you equate loss with the location of scattering and now all of a sudden now you're saying loss is oh they just don't know who they are um <clears throat> but just to respond second, to, right there right there right there what you just said yeah i never equated loss with scattering even about a, two weeks ago when i talked to you on the phone and called into the show then why the talk about the assyrians let me, let me let me finish my statement 
even about two weeks ago when I called into the show, did I, did I not tell you? When you asked about the lost sheep, you brought up the lost sheep, and I said the lost sheep does not reference them being unable to be found. But you Did just I gave this reference about them being in Assyria and all this and that, and you know they they're the northern trap. Like, why would you do that? And then just now we're going to ignore that, and now right. we're going to focus on a, a different aspect of loss. So, is there two aspects of being lost? Well, there's we're we're not ignoring that, King. That okay. was only in reference to the scattering of the house right that's why I took so you back so when to so king. the scattering that's why I took you back to king the scattering so so let me get this straight so the scattering is not in reference to any of the tribes being lost absolutely not okay well now okay well i i, I don't i have no clue why you would want to try to prove this to me by talking about the northern kingdom and the scattering and then this and that when i asked you what does it mean about lost sheep? Now you're saying, you know, well, let's just ignore that narrative. Now we're going to stick with the narrative of it's about you don't know who you are. And, and it's that. Uh, but, but you know, before we go on to the next scripture that, no, that I one had. Second, one second, one second, King. About the lost. I was only, I was only, and that was in reference. Now, we can yeah. put scattering to loss in reference of them being away from the laws and statutes of commandments. When I said lost, I was re referencing those who were scattered. Why? Because those who are scattered were dealing with Gentile customs, sacrificing to foreign gods in this nature and bowing down to wood and stone, therefore making them lost. Those are the scattered, that which are lost. So that's so once again in reference to that, but the loss is not in reference to them in is not in reference to them being unknown being in an unknown location because as i explained to you i dude, never argue the, the unknown that's location. all that's all i'm saying i never argued an unknown location in fact you pointed out the location i know i'm just out it was up. assyria i'm just clearing okay assyria I yeah you it. said they they got scattered into assyria and then after that they were in samaria and you mentioned things like that no, no, okay. No, this is what I said. This is what I said. I said the Assyrians scattered. Came and took them and scattered, scattered them. Absolutely not. Okay. Right. Other, and then you mentioned something about the Samaritans. Yes, I mentioned that the Samaritans. When you asked me about why did Christ say don't go to the Samaritans, but rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, I was saying the lost sheep was those who were scattered away. Right. But they were not lost because they were in a location unknown. They were only lost due to their uh, 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 not being, not knowing Christ, not being close to the Most High in reference to His law, statutes, and commandments. By via them being scattered in other nations, falling victim to these other nations and their gods. That's what made the scattered lost. You understand okay, what I'm and Jesus, okay, so like I said, I'm trying to take your definition and your narrative and fit it in yes, what sir. the Bible is clearly saying. Absolutely. And so far, I do not see one reference that Jesus had used when he talks about lost sheep. He could have used it. What do you mean? With by when that? he said, what I mean by is, you believe that the Israelites that were lost, scattered, whatever you believe that their lostness actually resulted in jesus and the apostles calling them gentiles which is the reason why you you posted the topic who are the gentiles in the new testament so far when i look at jesus he had a perfect opportunity to say that these lost sheep of the house of israel were indeed uh, you know uh he could have called them gentiles but he said do not go in the way of the gentiles in the same sentence that he put the samaritans and the lost sheep of the house of israel they're all distinct the other thing is is that jesus also said you know i have come to save that which is lost i understand what you're saying I right and he said that in the midst of drunkards prostitutes and tax collectors now, so far, like I said, I'm still trying to find it. And just, just to do one response to what you said in Revelation, and then we'll go to the next scripture that I use to prove my point. Um, you know, I'll stay in Revelation 14, but I'm going to go to verse 6. 
And it says this. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and every kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the uh, for the hour is a judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the mountains and the waters. So basically you have this angel just preaching to the entire planet saying to 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 honor God. And when you go all the way down to the verse that you said here, obviously somebody got that message. Didn't say that they were they were uh, Israelites or anything like that. It just said somebody got this message. And it says in verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And so whoever these people are, they are not just Israelites. They are, and so far, there's no reference in them. Uh, being lost or scattered Israelites. So far, they just simply sound like Christians. By the way, if you look up that word commandments, it's not uh, law, it's entole. It's not nomos, which means that those are specific commandments given by God, of course, you know, to lead the New Testament church, but that's a whole nother... Preaching. I don't want to get into that ballpark yet. Okay. Right. But, but so with that being said, I'd like to move to Acts 26, verse 7. Because this is the other scripture, Dad. You're doing it again. You don't realize it, but you're doing it again, Ken. You're doing oh. it again. You don't realize it. Like, you're, I'm giving you the scripture. I'm going through it. You say something, move to a completely whole different scripture without us even getting clarity or coming to some common ground on one particular scripture. This is what I don't like. You know what I'm saying? This gives people. Uh, of miss of uh, 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 a false sense of edification, because it's not like we're trying to build to get understanding, but try to build to battle. That's what it seemed like when you get what I'm saying. Because well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to battle with you at all. You, you know, you expounded on Revelation, and then after that, I expounded on Revelation. Listen to what no. I said. Remember okay. When, remember when you were talking about you didn't understand. Yeah, about the Sumerian and Christ saying, "Go to the, don't go to the Gentiles." Right. Did we come to any common understanding or common ground on that? I believe we did. I believe we did. The common understanding was you simply said that loss is in reference of them not knowing God. They're not knowing who they are, and they're serving mm -hmm. idols, which is proof of it. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. Now I took that narrative, and I tried to find that. In every reference where Jesus spoke about lost sheep, lost scattered tribes of Israel, say that which is lost, and I did, not, I did not find that narrative. The closest that I found that narrative is when Jesus said, hey, I've come to say that which is lost. And he said that in the midst of when the, Samar when the Pharisees were accusing him of being around tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. Understood, understood, understood King. Okay. Now, hey guys. That, that that's my very point. That is not the definition of common ground. What you just did was said, I I yeah, we met common ground. You said this, and I said no, it means this to me. So we met common ground. That's no, I did not ground. I did not say it meant this to me. I said that I tried to find I know that you more didn't say narrative. That. I'm just Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, I just I'll repeat myself. I said I tried to find your narrative Absolutely. in the scriptures of every time Jesus brought up loss, sheep, house of Israel, and 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 I'm pointing out what what the the scripture bears out as a narrative. Right. You and, know, if, if it says tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes, and you cannot and and excuse, go ahead. Okay, and and you know, so far you said loss means. Uh, you know, they are, they don't know who they are. They're not serving God and they're serving idols. And that is the biggest what, example of them being what, lost. What was the common ground that we found? Common mean is a point on the that. common one ground. Second, one second. Let me explain because what you just okay. went through was not a definition of two people finding common ground. It was a definition of two people okay. disagreeing upon a scripture. 
that's not find a common ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. What okay. was the common I, ground that we found on this topic? This is how we edify. The I, I think that. Going yeah, I, I think that the common ground. What we agree upon than what we disagree upon. You get what I'm saying? Well, at the yeah, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, there are differences between us, and I'm not afraid to carefully look at those. I'll look Understood. at the common ground too, and I think the common ground that we both can see is that we both agree that there were lost sheep of the house of Israel. Where we split at is who are those lost sheep? We have we're, we're pointing to different things, I and I think that this part, but this, yeah. right. I so so with that being said, I, I'd like to go to Acts twenty six seven. Wait a minute. See you. Hey, wait. So real. Go ahead. Um, hey guys, sorry to cut you off for a second, but um, how much time do you guys need? Okay. Uh, I was thinking for like you know, maybe two hours or something. I have yeah, to let go for about that. Oh, um, <laughs> are you guys able to make it until four though? Because I'm really sorry, but I have to work at five o'clock, and this was okay. Live that, yeah. I got till four o'clock, and then I gotta get ready for work. So it's four thirty-one okay. on my end right now. What time? Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm at five. I have to work at five o'clock my time. Yeah. So okay. What time is four? four and yep. I can get ready. Will that work for you guys? If you got into four and it's four thirty one on our end, what time is it on your end? It's three thirty on my time. I just need to make sure that we know that, so that way it doesn't yeah. come as a surprise. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me just say this before you go back in. This is a perfect example of what I'm saying, my king. When we just discuss about Christ telling them, "Don't go into into the city of Samaria." Did you hear why I said don't go into the city of Samaria? Why I said Christ told them not to go into the city of Samaria? Did you hear my explanation for that? Uh, yes, but I believe I forgot it. Can you jog my memory? This is what I'm saying. You know why? Because we're not looking to build. We're looking to, like I said, it's looking to challenge and battle when we're not giving the people edification. This is why I said that. No, I, I, I totally disagree. No, I, I listened to you. Okay, oh, no, no I, I totally disagree that I, I am not here to I am not here to, to battle you or anything like that. Well, if, I, if I miss something, I'm, I'm honest. I said, well, I, okay, I, I no. can't quite remember. Oh, now, I do remember true. other things you said, okay. but yeah, that, that's this one detail I don't remember. This is why I said that, and you were just talking about it. I mentioned the Assyrian captivity. Do you remember me mentioning the Assyrian captivity? Do you yes. remember me mentioning Israelites being carted off? Yes. I'm a reference. I'm a reference of scripture to you. Second Kings 17 and 24. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sepharvim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria. And what you get the Sephardim, this is what you where you get the Sephardic Jews from, the Sephardim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria to replace the Israelites. They took over Samaria and lived in its towns. Now, this is why I said in the New Testament, Christ told it the apostles or the disciples do not go into any city of Samaria. Now, I want to ask you, I was going to ask you before I gave you the answer, who was occupying predominantly, predominantly occupying Sumeria during the time of Christ and the apostles? What nation of people? Hold on just one moment. Um, I got to go to my door. So give me about like one, one minute. I, I'll be right back. I apologize. Just go look it up. I'll give you that one minute. Yep. Hold on. And family, I'm a, uh, I'm not going to keep it dry. So I'm just going to say that uh, when you build, a lot of people like to build machine gun style. What I mean by that, in less than 60 seconds, they'll go into a build, quote, five scriptures, and then talk, elaborate on all the five scriptures, 
after bunched up, not individually, and then swing it over to you. But their elaboration be so off of the basis of the scriptures they read, they get lost in their own context. So what we have to do when we build is we have to go scripture upon scripture and toss it back and forth. Because as I said, in 60 seconds, less than 60 seconds, the brother gave four scriptures, five or six scriptures, matter of fact, and he talked for about seven or eight minutes, right? But see, he stated or laid out the scriptures in a fashion and in a pace so fast that our people could not keep up with it. See, it make it seem like these brothers be reading off of a page, like they write a, a argument and then read it off the page. You see what I'm saying? So there's no room for you to interject a dialogue with the brother and come to some type of understanding about some scriptures. Now, as far as common ground, when I say common ground, what I mean is I say I see a scripture this way, you said you see it that way. <coughs> you try to see it from the aspect or the angle that I'm seeing it from, and I try to see it from the aspect or angle you seeing it from. And no matter what, after that's done, we'll find some common ground on that particular verse or scripture. We don't say, okay, well, I feel it this way, you feel it this way. Now, for my next point, we'll get no understanding like that. So for the people who listening and who may be new to listening to the base, who may be new to studying scriptures, who may be new to the most higher coming into Christ, they'll learn more efficiently this way. You can't thought a bunch of scriptures to a person. I can sit here and thought a bunch of scriptures all day long. But what will they that do? That'll only make me look like I know scripture. It won't make me look like I'm trying to reach the average Joe who may be coming into scripture or don't know scripture. It'll make me look I'm, like I'm trying to showboat more than teach the people or edify the people. Because if I know you're just coming in this and you may have one particular scripture in mind that you need understanding on and that you want understanding on, why would I just say something upon that scripture to just jump to another scripture, giving you no understanding or no edification upon that which you seek to get? So I can't format like that i don't build like that and a lot of people do that because it's a taught tactic all right i'm back can you hear me absolutely brother i can hear you okay cool um now do you, yeah sorry do you my question so back to your question you you said who were the people among the samaritans no what i said was during the time of Christ, when Christ, during the time of Christ and the apostles or the disciples, who were the predominant people in Samaria? The Assyrians? Who are you asking because the way you said it, it sounded like you had a question mark. It didn't sound well, like yeah, I'm taking a wild question. guess. Oh, and I'm going to educate you on this and we're going to exchange this information like this. And that's what I'll be saying, family. A lot of our brothers do not understand the Old Testament. So when they get to the New Testament, they don't understand who's being referenced to because they don't understand what happened in the Old Testament during the wars of the Israelites. They don't understand this history. They don't go into the Maccabees. They don't go into the books of Jeremiah. They don't go into the books of Ezekiel. They don't go into Kings. They don't go into Chronicles. They don't do this. So when you get to the New Testament, they'll say the Gentiles are everybody but scattered Israelites. So when you deal with the Assyrians, the Assyrians settled their people in the lands of the Israelites. 
the people from towns who they have captured and reigned over brought them, they brought those people to the lands and settled them in the lands. And then they began to rule over the Israelites that were in the land. And then through other captivities or other wars with Assyrian kings, you had more migrants coming in the land. Because we had more than just one Assyrian king attack us. We had just more than one deportation out of the land that we call today Israel. The Northern Kingdom have more than one uh, deportation. So did the Southern Kingdom. And you must also remember when there's wars, rumors of wars, you have refugees. You have people who leave out before the war even start. We can see that in today's population all over the world. So don't think it was any different in ancient times that all the people just stayed, even though they knew it was a war coming, they just sat in the land. People were migrating out People were running out, people were dying, running to the southern, eastern, and western parts of the geographical landmass surrounding that. So when you deal with the northern kingdom, as I told the brother, these were scattered Israelites. They were scattered, and this is why you see Christ telling the disciples, don't go into any part of Samaria because it was not a, 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 enough significant presence of Israelites there, natural born Israelites to preach the word to. And most of those Israelites there were of Gentile stock moved in. And a lot of those Israel, Israelites there were of mixed stock. Whose oh, okay, well, well now that, that begs a question. Well, well, now that begs a question. Because mm -hmm. based on what you just said, you're saying the reason why Jesus said don't go there this is based on what you just said, quote, because there weren't enough natural born Israelites. Everyone else was was mixed in with these Gentiles and things. So don't go there. But at the same time, you're going to come here and say that the lost Israelites were called Gentiles. It yes. doesn't make sense. Your narrative doesn't make sense. So you could say that, yes, I do agree that I do need to study the 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 peoples all throughout the 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 old testament a lot more meticulously i agree with that but now now we're coming into the new testament i'm still trying to find your narrative and based on what you just said right now once again is another contradiction so this is why i'm trying to be plain and clear so can you explain to me why Jesus would say, don't, according to you, can you explain to me why Jesus said, listen, don't go there. There's not enough natural Israelites. They're all kind of mixed and jumbled up. Don't go there. Don't go among the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but instead go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So obviously the whole mix up jumble, according to you, that's disqualified. So now we have to find out what other qualification defines these lost sheep. And like I said, uh, you, you haven't shown that. I'm trying to find in the New Testament where Gentiles are called Israelites. I can't find it. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Let me uh, tell you something, brother. Did I not earlier say that every time we see Gentiles in the New Testament, it does not it does not denote a natural born gentile you're that's an argument even, from silence that's an argument from one silence second. one second one second because i even gave the reference in genesis 10 where the word gentile is first used first used and it's only used in reference to one particular people those who come out of Japheth now you would have to go in scripture if you want to argue against the premise and show me what Gentile switch from Japheth to nations such as Ham to nations within the the, the lineage of Ham sure I, I can do that what, I, you would have sure to I can that. do that with Acts 15 right now where you had Peter or James or one of them and they were referencing uh, Amos chapter 9 verse 7 
and basically really? they they read from the Septuagint version, which said, uh, and the yeah here let me go to it right now. Now the 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 Hebrew version says Edom, but the Septuagint version. They have attributed it to something else, and according to you, they can't use this because you know they're 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 talking about Japhethites or something like that. But uh, you know, it seems that the 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 Israelites or the, the apostles don't mind uh, using things like this in, in, in such a way. It says this: Amos, Amos nine. Uh, I'm sorry. Nine, I seven. think it was Amos 9, 12. It's nine, no, it's nine, yes, seven. it's Amos 9, 12. Yeah, now, this yeah, is what it says. Yeah. It, this, this is the Hebrew, the Masoretic Hebrew that came, you know, 700 years later, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now, the Septuagint, which is what the apostles actually quoted, it says this. And the remnant of men and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called may earnestly seek me, saith the Lord, who does all these things. And that is the exact thing that uh, I think either Peter or James quotes in Acts 15 when they're talking to the Judaizers. But yet, you know, th this is what they quote because, you know, back then the Hebrew did not exist because it, it, it was lost. The only thing that they could quote was a Septuagint, which was a translation from a lost Hebrew text that we no longer have. Well, so well, here they are the using world. Gentiles, but according to you, they, they can't be in that category because they only have to come from Japheth. No, I did you know, not that, say that. They can't come no, from I Shem. Did. No, I did not say that, brother. Listen. Then why saying. did you ask? Then why did I you did, ask? Like oh, who are world. the Hamites? Who are the I'm, Egyptians? Why would I'm you actually, say that directly after you had said that these Hamites come from Japheth? Why would you say that in contrast? If, if that's what you said. This is what I. This is what. This is my point. This was my point, brother. My point was when you see it. When you see Gentiles in the scriptures, in the New Testament, should I say, in the Gospels? You refer it or prescribe it to every other nation outside of Israel, including Hamites. Do you not? Yes, and that's so, exactly. So wait, one second. So, so one second. So, my point was, how can you subscribe it to every other nation outside of Israel, including Hamites, when the original? title or subscription to gentile wasn't given to no other nation but the jephites and for the facts and the bible ain't no confusion so for the fact you you can subscribe gentile to every other nation outside of the jephites who the original gentiles were and Genesis the 10th chapter then you should also be able to subscribe Gentile to Israelites as well who do not fall under the original Gentiles of Genesis the 10th chapter that was my you'll have point. to you have to prove so you that. should not have a problem with so long so you should not have a problem with every other nation outside of Japheth being labeled Gentiles when you yourself label the Hamites as a Gentile people, when Genesis, the 10th chapter, where Gentile is first mentioned, doesn't even reference Hamites. That was my whole point. So, so what's Israel wrong with Gentiles? Israelites can be so what is wrong with Gentiles being referenced to all non-Israelites? Listen, nothing is wrong with that as long as you're not under or proposing the argument that Israelites cannot be referred to as Gentiles when, listen to me carefully, when you're arguing that Hamites can be referred to as Gentiles. At the same notion, you already know that the first time Gentile was ever used was in reference to not a Hamitic people, but a Japhetic people. So if I you can that. now, hold on, what, one second. I definitely so got if you that. Can, so one second. So if you can now use Gentile in reference away from its original prescription, 
in reference to a hermetic people, then you can use it in reference to a shemetic people as well. But you are neglecting its term or use to applying to a shemetic or Israelite stock of people. You're only in agreement or proposing its use and relation okay, to well, a hermetic people and a Japhetic people. Okay, well, I'll go. Okay, well, I'll go along with you with that. Because yeah. I totally understand with what you said. So this brings up another question. In what range or in what context or in what attitude were Israelites ever referred to as Gentiles? I can only think of one or two times. And that's when, one, when they were coming out of Egypt. And two, when I believe uh, it was David that, that said he felt like a stranger or something. And now, all of a sudden, you go into the New Testament, and you do not find them talking uh, about lost sheep like that at all. You don't find them talking about that in the reverse, saying, well, you know, these people that we call lost sheep are really our, our, our brothers. These people that we call Gentiles are really our, our brothers. You, you don't find that. That's what I'm saying. So, yes, you're right. In a sense, in the Old Testament, we can go there right now and we can actually see Israelites being called strangers. But then when we look at the nature of that definition, it was only geological. You know, you have them coming out of Egypt. Therefore, they're strangers. Why? Because they were strangers in the strange land that did not belong to them. Oh. Or when you have David. David said, oh, man, I, dang, I, I, I feel like a stranger or something. I, I wish I knew where the reference was. But, but that's it. But to say that, you know, well, these are actually just lost uh, people that are called Gentiles, I still can't find that narrative in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And so that's why it raises a question okay. in Acts 21. Okay, okay. Acts 21, I, I'll ask this question all the time. If you go to Acts 21, there's a place where Paul had the perfect opportunity to do this. And now I point this out all the time, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to just read it, and I'm going to ask you a question because I'm taking your narrative, and I'm trying to find it. And here's a perfect opportunity. This is Acts 21. All right? This is what it says. Hey, wait. Oh, you got hold on. I'm in Septuagint. Sorry. All I got to right. get to that. Hey, guys. Got to get to the KJV. Oh, yes. Are you saying something? Uh, yeah, but well, you got about like five minutes left. So can you guys like try to make up your last points because I gotta go soon. Oh wow! All right. Well, okay. I'll tell you what. My wrap up point will just be this reading of Acts twenty one here. Okay. And then uh, and, um, before when, before you wrap up, I want to give you a, a scripture referencing okay. the, uh, the Israelites. Okay. Uh, yeah. Your wrap up point. All right. So here's so here's my wrap up. Okay. In Acts twenty one. You have in verse 11, it says this, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man and owneth his girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Right? Then it says somewhere, I, I can't find it, but it talks about the, the, the Grecians complaining against Paul because he had brought the Greeks or the Gentiles into this holy place, right? Into the synagogue. Right. Mm -hmm. And they kicked all of them out. And yeah. Paul could have used a perfect opportunity to say, hey, why are you treating them like this? These Greeks, okay. th th these people that you call Greeks, these people that you call Gentiles, they're really our lost brothers. And we need to grift them back into it. He didn't say anything like that. Didn't say anything. Yeah. And neither did them in Acts 21, 28. Why didn't he end up saying it there? Why didn't he end up saying it in Ephesians 2, 11? I could have went to other passages, but that's all I have to say. I can't find your narrative in the New Testament, and yet you want me to believe this. Okay. I hear what you're saying, but I don't see it, and that's all I have to say. You got to speed it up real quick. Now, let me, let me go to Ezekiel 20 and 32. Turn to Ezekiel 20 and 32 real quick. We're going to go to Ezekiel 20 and 32 real quick. Let me show you something. Ezekiel 20. Let me get it in 32. Ezekiel 22 says this. And that which cometh to your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, we will be as the heathens 
as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. That's now let me go, let me take you to this is concerning the northern kingdom. Now let me take you to Ephesians 2. Let me take you to Ephesians 2 and 11 real quick. Keep that what I just said, family. Ezekiel 20, verse 32. Now let me take you to Ephesians 11 and 2, right? Let's go to Ephesians 11. And so let's get this. Let me show you something. I've heard this before. What, what, what you heard before? This, and okay, I give three strong arguments against it, archaeologically, okay. linguistically, and historically. Let's go let's to go Ephesians ahead. 2. Let's go to, excuse me, let's go to Ephesians 2. And let's go to Ephesians uh, 2 and... Start at verse 9. We're going we're gonna to start. And then we're gonna go to verse 12. No, we're going to start from verse 10. Okay. For we yeah. are his workmanship. Created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles who in are the flesh, who are circumcised, right? Who are circumcised, yeah, yeah, who, yeah, who are in uncircumcised, flesh, made by hand, who, yeah, who are, no, who are called uncircumcised. uncircumcised. Listen, listen. By that which is called the circumcision of the flesh within the hands. Now let's go to uh uh second Corinthians, second Corinthians ten and uh Romans. let's go to some, let's you, you go forget to about verse twelve, but okay. Ten minutes. You want me to read read the finish reading verse twelve? It's a context. I mean if you if you go in verse twelve, your your argument's gonna fall apart. No, go ahead. Well, let's 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 pick up on verse twelve then. Okay, because I mean, let's I I could isolate 12. scriptures all day and do the same thing, but once I compare okay. chapters, it's a whole okay. different story. Let's pick up on verse twelve. We had Ephesians okay. two, and we have Ephesians two, verse twelve says, "Uh, that at that time you oh I, yeah that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant." Of the promise having no hope and without Christ in the world. Now check this out. Now 13, the question is far off. When we go to the scriptures, we'll see who those people that's far off. But listen to 13. You shouldn't have brought this up. I was just trying to get to my other point. But this is this is this will do the job too. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now, what is that? Who were far off? Who are the people Gentiles. that were far off? Right? That, sure and not only sure. that, but he's actually using Jewish terminology to show right. that because the, there were certain Jews that were far off in the Old Testament. And he's using Jewish yeah. idioms to talk to the Gentiles. Okay. Brother, 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 when you go to when you go to Daniel 9 and 7, Malachi 4 and yeah. 7. Zechariah 6 and 15, those mm -hmm. who were far off, that parallels and is a precept to Ezekiel 2, that what I just read, 2, 12, 13, that's a, uh, uh, and also together, these certain people that's sitting up in the heavenly places when you look at uh, Ephesians 2, and these are the same people who are dead and sin. So when you're dealing with those who were far off, you see who they were. As nope. uh, the Once apostle again. said, yes. the apostle yes. said, the apostle said, Ye are the spiritual gifts, brethren. I have you not ignorant. Ye being past times, uh, uh, past time Gentiles carried away in the flesh, work, car carry away to worship wood and stone, even as ye were led. And I just gave you the scripture that uh that the uh that the Gentiles will be or the Northern Kingdom will be worshiping wood and stone, and they will be think themselves to be Gentiles. You get right. what I'm saying? So when you go to the New Testament, you see who these saying Gentiles are. The whole thing about it is this. You have a brother who don't understand the scattering of the northern kingdom or the scattering of the Jews in the Old Testament, but who have a affirmative understanding, so-called, or belief that the New Testament Gentiles, all every place that it mentions, are not Israelites. See, you cannot understand what's going on in the New Kingdom or the New Testament not understanding what's going on in the Old Testament. In fact, it's not or it's not a New or Old Testament. It's all one book. All right, can I respond real quick? 
So you Wait. cannot understand it. Yeah. So this, I'm just, I'm just in a teaching mode and learning mode right now. So. Gotcha. Cool. Well, yeah. you're about to Let's learn go. a lot more. So. Hey, wait, hey, wait. Uh, just real. Make this rep, Make your response, and then we gotta get, and then we're out of time. All right. Well, uh, just to make a long story real short, like I said before, Paul is using the same Jewish idioms that were used of the Jews in the Old Testament, and he's applying them to Gentiles. He's literally saying that being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. Now, time out. He could have just said, well, listen, the, you can, you guys can come back into your inheritance. Nope. He never mentioned any wait narrative like that. He wait also second, said, is, wherefore, in, in the past, Notice being so Gentiles there. in the flesh. In there. What that is means there? natural born Gentiles. If you look that up in the Greek, it means natural born Gentiles. You were born a Gentile. So you can't get no more Gentile than that. Uh, they, they weren't lost uh, lost people. Another thing is it said that it was to break down the middle wall of separation. That's Everybody knows things. that in the, book, in the writings of Josephus, he literally said there was an actual wall. It had a warning to say, listen, if any Gentiles come past this wall, you're going to be stoned. You're going to be put to death. That's because within the temple itself, there was an outer court for the Gentiles and an inner one for the Jews. And he said that he broke down that middle wall. He would not break down that middle wall for a people that were scattered and they were already uh, to, to be coming on back in. It doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense if those people were actually Gentiles and could not come back in. Not that they have some long lost inheritance and all that. If that was the case, then they would just be able to come on back in no matter how lost they were. They'd have to give up their idolship and things like that, but they'd come on back in. But that wasn't the case. The wall had to be broken down as, as, and it's as there we, in the writing of Josephus. So look, as we, that as, is a narrative of the New Testament. And like I said, because of that, I cannot say, oh, these people are indeed actual Gentiles, when in reality, Paul is only using Jewish idioms that came directly from the same experiences of the Jews in the Old Testament. It's the same the reason why you have in Hebrews, where it said, now we can all draw nigh unto God. All over the Old Testament for the Jews, draw nigh unto God, draw nigh unto God. Well, now in the book of Hebrews, now in the New Covenant, the Gentiles can do the same thing. So they say, oh, you can draw now to God. But I would never say that those Gentiles, because I said that, it really means that I'm talking to Israelites because I use a Jewish idiom. So once again, all, you're all saying right. all these things, all right. but it's not adding up. All right, right, listen. All right, now listen, listen. I just want to yeah. ask the brother. I'm going to handle the rest of that because we can't this show. Next time, so real, don't get somebody who got less than 30 minutes for us to deal with our situations. Hey, I had no clue somebody. that this guy was going yeah, to go to work. I, I had no gotta, clue that this guy ask. was going to end up going to work. Yes, I had no clue that this guy was end up going to go to work. I know, I know, I know. The next time you have to ask. We'll do this again at your early convenience next time you have to ask. But I just want to know, where could I go to see this? Whose channel? You'll find this on my channel, the Logical Christian Ministry. And it's been recording. Okay. So if you want to watch it, you can find it on my YouTube channel. And... So real said that he will be downloading the, this to his channel. So, well, this is nothing because we didn't really get a time to uh, uh, get into the a lot of information we wanted to get into because of a shortage right, of time. Yeah. So right. we'll pick back up at a later date. So real, just inbox me. I'm available well, tonight not. if you want to pick this back up. If you can get your thing working uh, later on tonight, probably around eight nine. I'm available then. Yeah, uh, because this really was we really didn't get a chance to. Yeah, we really ain't even scratch the surface. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna I say know. peace to y'all, and I'm gonna uh, so real peace, and I'm gonna say peace to the brother who uh, put this together. But so real, be, learn how to work your stuff, man. Learn how to work it when you want to talk smack about Hebrews. When you want to, <laughs> you don't know how to work it when you're dealing with a Hebrew. <laughs> so, but look, get it together, baby. I told you about hitting them corners too goddamn fast. You know what? Get it together, baby. Hey, get it together. All right, <laughs> All right bro. Peace to y'all, man. Peace. Peace and blessings. Everybody, man. peace. Peace and blessings yeah. to you, King, as well. All right. All right. Okay. This has been a discussion between So Real and 
Yes, you are. But as I've stated before, I am now out of time. So we will go ahead and say for now, we are clear. God bless to everyone listening.